Is it safe to say that you're trying to send a message that you're up? Let's see what's hiding under there. He woke me up first thing in the morning. He always does. Ah, look at that. Here comes from the abyss. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Breathe like a dragon, you beautiful coffee. These are called backups. I noticed that Adam the Woo is having a problem replacing his, his uh, sunglasses. Since I've come to really love the green sunglasses and I wear them pretty much every day now, I went ahead and bought two more pair just for backups. 99 cents. You can't go wrong with that. What was that? Hey, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? You just won't leave me alone, will you? You're up here tapping on my chair. I'm trying to watch my early morning YouTubes. It only takes about 15 minutes and you're still over here harassing me. What's the deal here? Well, we just came back from the dog park. I figured you guys might be getting tired of seeing that. And we're going to hit Bella's stairs again. I won't show you all of it. But we're going to do it up and down three times. Right here on the steps, I looked over and noticed this. When the uh, arm from this cactus fell, or was cut off or whatever, it's a perfect star. I never knew that before. You know what else I never knew before? As I was leaving uh, South Central yesterday, I was stopped at a light and I couldn't even grab my camera fast enough. But they had a uh, watermelon truck there. And it said yellow meat and red meat. And I don't like watermelon, so I didn't even know that that was a thing. They had yellow and red meat. <clears throat> so, you know, I guess you learn something new every day. The way I actually found a picture of Bella Lugosi in the backyard of this house that's at the top of this step. And, uh, wish I would have found that earlier, but I'll post it in here just because it's fitting. Also, I didn't notice that they put a little bench here. As we were coming down, I looked over and saw that. Interesting. Somehow it feels harder today than it did the other day. We're going down for a third time. And then I thought of some places to go show you today. A bunch of places all right along Franklin. Feast your eyes upon my lunch. Go out for a little bit of a walking tour and show you guys some stuff and what's the first thing I saw? It's been moved again. Yeah. If you remember back in my Manor Hotel vlog, I told you guys a story that uh, the security guards had told me there that an old timer had come back and told them that he had seen Charlie Chaplin dance on the tables of the Renaissance restaurant inside there. Well, I also read in a lot of books that a lot of people, even though they had homes, would have apartments near the Manor Hotel because it was just kind of a place to hang out. Now this was a hotel, or actually this is an apartment building, but they kind of Airbnb some of the rooms now and there's one room in here called the Chaplin Room that you can Airbnb. And Charlie Chaplin had this built after coming back from France and staying at the Clare Ridge Hotel. He loved it so much that he had this apartment building built and it's conceivable that that Charlie Chaplin room that they have in there would be the room that he would have uh, came to sleep it off after his night of drinking and party and uh, table dancing at the manor. So if you uh, look online, there are pictures of Charlie in front of the actual Claridge Hotel in Paris and this is a pretty close pretty close rendition of that and they have that on the front that's the 101 cafe if any of you saw brown bunny starring vincent gallo <laughs> the real controversial scene in that movie takes place inside of here that's that building. Actually, a hotel 
but we all know it because we all go, my friends and I, we go to the 101 Cafe, which is right there. And they've shot scenes in, of uh, Entourage inside there. The guys have sat right, right in that booth. And the shot was, uh, you could see right outside that window, one of the episodes of Entourage. Or maybe it was the movie, I forget. But I saw it pretty recently. And the next place we're gonna be coming up on is the Altanito. And uh, I happened to be watching Sunset Boulevard the other night. I hadn't seen it in forever. And uh, that mansion's been bulldozed, so we can't go there. But at the beginning of the movie, when they show you William Holden, they introduce William Holden into the movie, he walks into the Altanito and says that he lives there. And they pan up and they show him inside apartment 503. I kind of doubt that they filmed his scenes inside the actual 503, but you do see the outside of this building. This is kind of a weird one to get to the uh, Sunset Boulevard apartment because they built a freeway off ramp kind of right beside it. You can see right here where this do not enter sign is. That's the, uh, that's the street it's on. And clearly they had to put a sign there because somebody probably tried to walk up the wrong way onto the freeway. But shockingly, I'm not going to. Well, it's changed a little bit, but this is it. The opening shot you would have seen from Sunset Boulevard. Well, not the opening shot. The opening shot's him dead in the pool talking which is creepy enough as it is but then it actually starts here you see him walking up here and then the camera goes to that you can see those archways in the video and in his apartment would have been that one and in the movie it says 503 things were tough at the moment I hadn't worked in a studio for a long time so I sat there, grinding out original stories, two a week. Only I seem to have lost my touch. Maybe they weren't original enough. The Altanito. I've walked past this place I don't know how many times in my life and never put two and two together that that was where William Holden lived in Sunset Boulevard. But that's it. I'm sure, uh... Like I said, I'm sure that they did not film his scenes inside here. That looked like a set to me, but uh, I would love if I could just to walk in there and look at the numbers on the doors. Cars in here. Oh, is that so? He loaned it to a friend of mine. He took it down to Palm Springs. Had to get away for his health, I suppose. If you don't believe me. I don't, actually, I don't think there's even five floors on this. I think there's only three or four floors, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like there's three floors in this building, so probably it definitely was not, um, it definitely was not it. Let me give you a little bit of a view from, of Hollywood from here. Things were tough at the moment. I hadn't worked in a studio for a long time. So I sat there grinding out original stories, two a week. Only I seemed to have lost my touch. I don't know any story about this place, but it's old. It's pretty interesting looking. They're gonna be filming something here tomorrow by that notice. And this has that old, that old, old, European feel that we've come to know from the Beechwood houses. We're not in Beechwood, but they're everywhere. I just found out Nathaniel West lived here when he wrote Day of the Locust, one of my favorite movies. Kind of ironic that we did Sunset Boulevard today and then I walked past that. Hang signs in case you were wondering.
Now this is called the Montecito. And the Montecito now, much like a lot of the old kind of historic buildings, and I don't have a problem with this, I'm not complaining about it. Um, now with a lot of these buildings, what they've done is they've turned them into elderly apartments, people that aren't ready for a retirement home, that are still self-sufficient, and uh, they make it low income. So it's, I think you pay, I knew somebody that lived here, I think she told me that she paid $300 a month, which is very little. But the significance of the Montecito is that Ronald Reagan lived here in this apartment building. Gene Hackman lived in this apartment building. And Gene Wilder lived in this apartment building. And I had actually recently got Gene Wilder's book and he mentions it in there. And he says that this was a kind of a low income actor's hotel when he moved to town and he lived here for a short time. So that was just kind of along the way. Nothing really to see inside because I don't know any of the rooms they lived in, but a historic place nonetheless. If you don't know anything about me, or you're learning about me, my favorite authors of all time are F. Scott Fitzgerald and Oscar Wilde. And to know that F. Scott Fitzgerald used to eat here, it's pretty amazing. This is one of the oldest restaurants in Hollywood. Maybe the oldest restaurant, I think, in Hollywood. I've never actually eaten here, though. The famous scene from Ed Wood, where he comes in and meets Orson Welles, is actually filmed inside here in a booth. So, I figured I'd throw that in since I was walking past it. Well, this magnificent building pretty much sat here untouched for about the first 10 or 12 years that I lived here. Nobody really ever knew what it was about, what the story was, and then they completely re-renovated it with like a note on the door saying they were going to take it back to the way it originally was when it was founded. So at that time, I looked into it, and this actually used to have a club, it used to have a health club, it used to have kind of an all-purpose hotel and it was owned by Valentino and it was called Valentino's and it totally makes sense because Valentino lived about two blocks away right next to Francis X Bushman up in Whitley Heights and uh, it's pretty common for these guys to have businesses everywhere so this would have been Rudolph Valentino's hotel mainly an investment for him but his nonetheless who I found. Well, I gotta hand it to her. She wasn't wrong. She said it was in front of the record store. Not exactly the record store, but she was pretty close. Right in front of Capitol Records. It's a crazy place to leave your shoes. Whatever. Man, I should have had my camera rolling. Literally 20 seconds ago, I looked over. Car window was rolled down in the passenger, or in the yeah, in the passenger seat was Danny McBride, Kenny Powers, and I'm wearing this. I looked over and he pointed at my shirt, and I go, "You're the man. I love it." Pulled the camera out, and by the time that happened, the traffic went, and I missed it. Sorry, guys. I just wanted to give everybody a big shout out. Thank you for joining and subscribing to my vlog. I'm now at 90 subscribers. My goal was to try and get to 100 in a year, the way Casey Neistat and Adam the Woo did, because those are my favorite vloggers, and I just, you know, just trying to set a pace for myself. And I've hit like 90 subscribers in 64 days. That's so cool, and thank you so much, guys. Tomorrow I'm gonna do the Pretty Woman uh, Hollywood locations, so come back and watch tomorrow. Vlog over.